ovary possesses about half a million eggs embedded in follicles. Several follicles, and therefore eggs, mature in each cycle. The dominant follicle grows to about 2 centimeters in the fimbriated end of the fallopian tube, which eventually catches the egg, moves to the site of ovulation. The egg consists of an outer layer called the corona radiata. Underneath is another protective layer, the zona pellucida. Both layers must be penetrated by the sperm cell in order to reach the cell nucleus that contains 23 different chromosomes. Each chromosome contains DNA. DNA is the blueprint for building our body cells. Eye color, body size, arrangement and function of our organs. It's all in there. If two identical chromosomes occur in one cell, we can later speak a trisomy. The egg cell is transported inside the fallopian tube with the help of cilia and mucus produced by glands in the walls of the fallopian tube. Additional contractions of the muscle layers help to transport the ovum. At a speed of about three to four millimeters per minute, something else makes its way from the other side of the fallopian tube. Sperm cells, thousands of them, and barely visible. They all have only one goal, reaching the ovum. A sperm cell's nucleus contains the male's genetic information. Through messenger substances emitted by the egg cell, the remaining sperm cells find their way to the ovum. The goal of all sperm cells is to penetrate the two outer layers to reach the chromosomes. The sperm cell penetrates corona radiata and zona pellucida, resulting in the degradation of the acrosome cap. Upon entering the cytoplasm, fertilization occurs, resulting in activation. Activation causes, among other things, a structural change of the zona pellucida so that no further sperm can penetrate. In addition, activation causes the ovum to complete its second maturation division. In this process, the sister chromatids are pulled into opposite poles and a female pronucleus and a polar body are formed.
the sperm's tail and head gradually degenerate into cytoplasm. The condensed sperm nucleus rapidly increases enormously in size and the chromatin decondenses. Thus, a male pronucleus is formed with 23 unreplicated chromosomes that possess the genetic information of the father. As the two pronuclei approach, both double their DNA, resulting in replicated chromosomes. Finally, syngamy occurs, in which the pronuclei dissolve and the chromosomes of male and female are properly aligned in the spindle apparatus. Now, the cell is called a zygote, which is the very first cell of the new human being. The stage of cleavage begins. In this process, the cell continues to divide two cells, then four, then eight. At a 16 cell to 32 cell stage embryo, we speak of a murala, since the shape resembles a mulberry. The cells are still enclosed by the zona pellucida. Thus, after each cell division, whilst the number of cells increases, the size of each cell diminishes. Finally, the blastocyst is formed. The blastocyst consists of a fluid-filled cavity the cells of the embryoblast and the trophoblast. The embryoblast is the initial structure of the new human being, whereas the trophoblast is the origin of placenta and membranes. Let's see the individual stages in the fallopian tube. Fertilization occurs at the end of the tube. The first cell division takes place about a day after fertilization. Eventually, further cell divisions happen forming the murala and in the uterus, the blastocyst is created. At this stage, the mucous membranes of the uterus or womb has already been prepared for the implantation of the blastocyst. Usually, the blastocyst implants in the posterior wall of the uterus. However, implantation can also occur on the side, as we will see in a moment. The blastocyst floats in the protective and nourishing uterine mucus. For implantation in the uterus, the blastocyst must first hatch from the protective zona pellucida. Then the blastocyst burrows further and further into the uterine lining, like a parasite. Let's take a closer look at this. The endometrium has a protective epithelium and capillaries filled with blood, as well as mucus-producing glands. The trophoblast cells fuse with the endometrium and a syncentral trophoblast is formed that will nourish the embryo. In addition, hypoblasts and epiblasts arise from the embryoblast. The embryo burrows further into the endometrium rapidly increasing in cell mass and leaving a wound, which may result in a completely harmless implantation bleeding. Finally, the amniotic cavity is formed. As the process continues, the yolk sac is created, as well as a non-cellular plug that is later sealed by migrating uterine epithelial cells. The trophoblast rapidly increases in size, with the amniotic cavity and yolk sac remaining relatively small. This gives rise to the chorionic cavity and a body stalk. <laughs> 